So you've downloaded Ark and ready to jump in and play it, right? <laughs> Ark's menu screen alone can be overwhelming when just wanting to play the game. So how does it all work? You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to a dummy's guide to Ark. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. Greeted with the main screen, you'll find what's new to the top right, the latest update running to the bottom left, the choice to play a totally different style of Ark to the bottom right and of course your main menu choices to the left. Working from bottom to top, exit and credits are self-explanatory themselves. Survival Guide gives you a handy overview of the core user interface options, crafting and placement introductions, the basics on taming and a quick look at why you should explore each map. Now options you do want to jump into, and depending on your platform it may look a little different, but we're going to use PlayStation's interface for this example, most of which you can change on the fly in-game if you change your mind. Audio settings says it on the tin, filling your ears with some beautiful arc sounds from the music and effects, through to how loud players and story-driven characters are heard in-game, with an overall setting if you want to adjust it all. UI general and item slot scales define your HUD, how big or small you want to see your inventory, with a squinty warning at its lower setting. Gamma correction is a handy tool for console. Arc is a dark game at times, and whilst PC does have a command to change on the fly, you'll be changing this a lot if you want to see without a torch at night. V-Sync is one of the few graphic settings available, so if you want to cap the frame rate to your TV or monitor, switch it on, which may result in a smoother experience with lower demanding monitors. Motion blur should be an automatic switch off, never keep this on, unless looking for a cinematic style of play. Menu transitions simply improve that speed, navigating the obvious menu if turned off. High detail and HDR output, depending on your console used, will be available, and naturally improve the in-game graphics, worth switching off if entering PvP, which we'll get to later. Camera Shake does exactly that, something you may want to lower if not panicking every time a Bronto comes stomping by. Sensitivity settings should be a familiar one, with my advice to have these lower than halfway unless you want to feel like a kid in a toy shop, with invert controls if you'd prefer. Melee Camera and View Bob provide camera jumping when fighting or travelling, which you may want to consider switching off especially for motion sickness. Third Person Camera Offset moves the camera away to the side when playing in third person, and disabling the interpolation should be ticked on if you want an easier time shooting your enemies. Blood is blood turned off for the queasy bunch out there, and floating names provides handy details above characters and dinos, something you may want to turn off for less lag, though disabling your HUD in-game can do this as well. Join notifications tells you who's joining your game, and if you want to see their chat bubbles pop up above their heads when they speak, with first person riding being an option if you only want to ride dinos in first person, but I wouldn't if you want to see anything at all. Status notifications tell you when something's happened to affect you, like being at one with a lovable leech, and Fahrenheit temperature can be ticked on if you aren't a fan of Celsius. Auto chat box keeps a little global chat box refreshed in game every time someone types, worth turning off if you've got a chat spamming neighbour, and hide server info is a handy tool for any streamers out there that don't fancy being tracked down to any maps they're playing on. Torpidity effect removes the flashing glow when nearing an early sleep, worth keeping on to not catch you by surprise, and chat show tribe name tells you what tribes people are chatting from within the global chat. Allow crosshair is a must, providing a handy lineup in game when aiming those precise shots, and colour item names to distinguish any colour scheme in game that you'll certainly want. Default survivor items should always be switched off, unless you plan to keep respawning with any in game skin rewards you unlocked every time you die. Floating gamer tags give you the option of showing their actual PSNs or gamer tags. Handy to turn off if streaming, and quick toggle item names gives you an option on whether you'd like to turn off descriptions for each item in your inventory on the fly. Something you can simply turn off in game anyway, using the same button for ease of inventory navigation, which you will prefer to have. Item selector button is a handy tool, with R3 allowing you to quickly switch inventory items on the fly, with click sounds being explanatory and extended HUD info being a handy tool for additional info such as time, heat, location and effects toggled in-game. 
Light Bloom and Shafts are a must for gameplay experience. Prefer to have that cinematic dazzling? Keep them on! Want to actually see without being blinded 24-7? Keep them off! And subtitles are naturally handy when wanting to read what's being said. You do have an option to set all of this to default if you think you've messed up, and make sure to apply, save and exit to keep the settings you want. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty, actually playing the type of game you'd prefer, with the option to join an online game or host your own, keeping it a simple single player experience if you'd prefer. Hosting, you'll find a bucket load of options to refine your type of game to the left, which we'll touch on later, and your maps available to play on in the middle. Story arcs are the core maps tied to the venture through arcs progression, starting with the island first, and if wanting to play in chronological order, follow with Scorched Earth, then Aberration, then Extinction, and then Genesis Part 1 followed by Part 2, ignoring the order listed. Custom arcs give you a very similar survival experience, but within some of the best handcrafted community made maps available, picked and chosen by Wildcard to be available to you for free, all offering their own unique adventures and creatures awaiting. With each map played, you'll find a handy save icon, telling you you've done something on that map, which you can opt to delete if you really wish, deleting all if you've been sent to the loony bin. With the map selected, you've now got the choice of playing in single player, your own solo adventure that saves progress every time you quit, playing a dedicated version, turning your console into a server of its own, which we'll touch on later, playing a procedural arc, randomly generating a completely new map, which sadly isn't as fun as it might sound, and hosting a non-dedicated arc, allowing you to run an online game between you and a handful of friends only, able to have a private match between yourself requiring a password and what your session will be called so players can find your game, able to use your single player save if you'd prefer and again saving everyone's progress when you exit the game, which I'll explain how to join later. Now you've got the exceptional overwhelming task of choosing your arc rules, each providing a handy explanation when highlighted, and available to restore to default if you'd prefer. There are an incredible range of customization options here for you, and whilst I will leave a link to a video by JadePG explaining each one in depth, standard ones to consider are difficulty, setting to 5 if looking for something close to official settings, but recommended to turn on maximum difficulty lower down. Third person camera is a must as well as crosshair. Hardcore wipes your character upon death, something you'll only want to do if you're a stark raving lunatic like my 100 days vid. PvE removes any ability players have of destroying you, your base and creatures. Map location is needed to see where exactly you are on the map. Downloads available if you'd like to transfer items or creatures from other maps. Gamma PvP to allow players to see at night. Single player settings being a handy tool if you want an easier experience. Corpse locator a must if you want to find any lost kit when you die. Disable structure placement collision handy if you want to build anywhere without the map terrain stopping you from doing so. Multiple platform floors to build giant rafts or platform saddled creatures. Unlimited respects if you'd like to change your character's stats later on in game. Creative mode if you just want to create some epic builds with no limits to actually grinding in the game and flyer speed leveling for some super fast flyers in game. Advanced settings offer even more options, like allowing tribes to ally, PvE only modes to have agreed PvP wars, extra structure prevention to keep those metal rich areas unbuildable, override structure platform prevention for even bigger rafts and platform saddles, offline raid protection if you'd like a timer cooldown of when players log off in PvP, leaving their bases open to being raided for a short time, damage multipliers to anything built in caves, imprint buff being an option you'll want for any raised baby dinos to be even stronger when ridden, allowing anyone to help raising them if you choose to, and a variety of settings to speed up of how quickly you'd like to raise any baby creature in Ark to adult. A big important choice to make considering some creatures can take over a real time week to raise. Cuddle settings are especially worth noting, ensuring you get a 100% imprinted baby dino in arc, and with quicker speeds means you'll need to adjust these to fit, sadly not having any specific setting per raising multiplier, but to simplify lower the interval if raising the rates. 
With options to customize wild, tamed and character stats per level or raise their experience gained, allowing RPG style damage numbers if you'd like, custom recipes to be crafted in game, able to feed and keep some of the huge creatures you can temporarily tame in game, and how quick fuel is consumed by generators being some of the considered changes. You can also opt to turn off any items in the game you don't want to craft. Though, unless you want a different style of game to what's intended, there's no real reason to turn any off, with all settings taking effect to your single player, dedicated or non-dedicated sessions. So, how do you join your friends or any other player out there? Hopping on through to join game via the main menu will provide you with a session list, telling you every online game available to join once searched for. Heading to session filter first narrows down what type of hosted game you want, and you'll find a number of options to pick from. Non-dedicated will be your go-to if joining a friend who has set up a private game for you both to play, able to search it by name via the filter at the top of the screen, and simply entered by selecting that game and clicking join. Player Dedicated takes you to the sessions hosted by your own consoles, naturally needing two Playstations or Xboxes if looking to join your own game, but able to allow more players and improved gameplay if doing so. Official Dedicated takes you to the big league games, hosted by the developers themselves, allowing a variety of different play modes, all linked together for you to travel between. Covered in another video, I'll link in the description. But to sum up, if it's simply called Official, that's the main entry online game. If you'd prefer a different mode, simply search for it via the filter, with an example such as Smalls allowing you to see the Small Tribe game mode servers only. With all servers searched, you have the option of sorting them by name, players, ping or otherwise internet connection, and day, with players being a great choice to sort between which servers are populated and which ones aren't. You can narrow this down even further to the core gameplay styles, PvP and PvE, namely player versus player and player versus environment. The latter being your choice to only need to worry about the creatures in the game, and the former allowing any player in the game to kill you, blow up your base and your dinos with it, in an ever online experience that never switches off, so choose wisely. You can also narrow down maps if there's a favourite of yours you'd prefer to play with again, the island being the first canon map in the game if you're new. Legacy servers allow you to join much older versions of the official servers available that date back to when Ark first launched, but seeing they are wiped and repurposed for official, I'd advise to avoid these. And finally, unofficial PC sessions, hosted through big server companies that provide much smoother gameplay experiences akin to that of official, customised and rule changed by players themselves, providing a wide range of ways to play Ark, and usually their own communities through Facebook or Discord to understand further, normally offered through a welcome screen once joined. The two giants for creating any unofficial PC session on console is either Natrado or G Portal, and I'd have to recommend G-Portal being a go-to nowadays through their server protection and response alone, of which I'll have a link to rent via my personal 5% off discounted affiliate link in the description. And that's everything you need to know in the main menu. It's been 84 years. With a world of different ways to play Ark comes a world of different options, but I hope this has helped. If it has, please comment below, let me know. And if you'd like to see more guides on the basics in game, please do let me know. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out.